At the same time, I also like the idea of having a, a dynamic economy that provides us the luxuries um, and the, you know, the, the technological gadgets and, and interesting and innovative things, but they have to fit within fairly strict ecological limits, you know, far more strict than, you know, we're currently getting away with today. So, you know, it's a world, I think, that's like more high quality public services uh, and fewer private personal goodies and especially, you know, gratuitous things like, you know, private jets and, and yachts. Um, so we should be trying to like, you know, squ squeeze things so we have, you know, zero poverty and homelessness on the one hand and zero extreme wealth uh, on the other. I don't think there's really anything holding us back from doing those things except sort of phantom fears uh, of debt. You know, this idea that, you know, somewhere down the road, some future group of humans in our perception may owe too much money or have lent too much money to another large group uh, you know, of humans. Um, I think it's the wrong way of thinking about it. It's ultimately about how we mobilize resources uh, in, the, in the here and now and you know, provide a high level of well-being for everyone. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not particularly worried about, um, about debt right now. Like at the end of the day, like you know, there's two parties to any transaction on debt. You know, there's the borrower and, and, and the lender. So like I was saying, like a, a lot of this is this, this fear that, um, you know, governments may at some point owe too much to, to other uh, parties. Um, but, you know, there's always two sides to that transaction. And so what, what really matters right now is like, well, what's the cost of, of servicing uh, that debt? You know, how, and interest rates are in, incredibly low. And, and essentially, like the, the flip side of that transaction is that you know government debt uh, offers up safe assets for people to invest their money into, right? So if you if you have money, you need to do something with it. You can put it in stocks, you can put it in real estate, you can buy bonds. Those are really your your main uh, set of options. So you know part of the issuing of government debt is also sort of in service to uh, financial markets. Um, but I think this idea that, you know, you raised around, around how COVID has been such uh, a game changer and things that were previously, uh, you know, considered impossible uh, have essentially become possible once uh, necessity made it so and once there's been a, a will to actually go there. So I think that's the kind of mindset that we need to shift when we th start thinking about, uh, about climate. The other piece I think that's really interesting around debt right now is that you know, it's not just the federal government issuing debt, but it's also the Bank of Canada that's buying up a lot of debt uh, in, in the marketplace. Um, so in doing so, they are, um, you know, giving money to people who are currently holding, um, you know, financial assets in the form uh, of bonds. Um, but the, the trick in all of that is that, um, well, then who then does the federal government owe the money to? Well, the Bank of Canada. Okay, so they're paying interest to the Bank of Canada. But at the end of the year, if the Bank of Canada has a profit, it reverts back to its owner. Who is that? The federal government. So it's a little bit uh, of a trick, um, uh, but it actually works. Um, and it's, you know, they, they call it quantitative easing. And, uh, you know, there are different ways of, of going about it. But it's kind of a, a new approach to, the, to dealing with monetary policy uh, that essentially says, you know, uh, there are... Um, some constraints on, on government, but ultimately it's about mobilizing resources into action. And as long as you're, you're, you're injecting money into the economy uh, in a way that's not overheating things, but that's backfilling the, the lack of demand because people are, are you know, short of work or, or, or income, then there's no reason to fear that this is going to have like really massive consequences um, down the road. Uh, and in fact, if anything, you know, maintaining high levels of employment now has a benefit down the road because if people are out of work for a long time, it makes them harder to you know, employ. If we, if we let things really fall apart, then you're looking at people losing their homes, businesses, you know, becoming bankrupt, you know, um, all kinds of like negative consequences that are much harder to break out of what we call a depression. Uh, in, in um, you know, if we look back historically, that's not a place we want to get to. It can be really hard to get out of. Yeah.